In the meantime, another Fox News alert. President Biden attending his final G20 summit in Brazil at any moment. Man, look at the beautiful shots of Rio. Yeah, this after the president signed off on Ukraine's use of long-range uh, U.S. weapons inside Russia called attackums. Lucas Tomlinson is live from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Hey, Lucas. Well, good morning, Ainsley. Good morning, guys. This is something that Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has been begging President Biden for for years now. And it's notable that specific type of American missile, as you mentioned, Brian, the ATACMs have been used to strike Crimea in the past, but there were restrictions on using them inside Russia no longer. Now, Zelensky had compl been complaining for a little while now that only 10% of the weapons that Congress approved, remember that $60 billion package, only 10% of the weapons in that package has arrived uh, into Ukraine. Now, speaking of arrival, President Biden arrived here in Rio last night. It's notable, guys, there was no red carpet rolled out uh, for his arrival, as we're about to see here. Now, China's President Xi Jinping was afforded that honor. Biden attended an economic summit in Peru before coming here, where China was given the rare honor of a state visit. Biden was not. Brazil is also extending that same honor to Chinese President Xi here in Rio, not Biden. Today, Biden will attend meetings here in Rio on global hunger and have a reception with world leaders at an art museum. Putin is not here, of course. Now, officials say Biden has signed off on this limited counterstrike, allowing Ukraine to use American missiles with a range of up to 90 miles that come in single warhead and also cluster munitions. The goal is to hit North Korean soldiers that have deployed to Russia, specifically the Kursk region, and only this area inside Russia where Ukraine launched its incursion back in August. Now, Ukraine is forbidden, Brian, to use these missiles, American missiles, elsewhere. Biden's decision to use these longer range missiles comes one day after Russia launched one of its largest attacks on Ukraine since the start of this war, firing over 200 missiles and drones. Those drones from Ukraine, of course, targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure, where winter has already arrived. Now, yesterday, Biden became the first sitting president to visit the Amazon. I'm proud to be here. The first sitting U.S. president to visit the Amazon rainforest. History is literally watching us now. So let's preserve this secret place for our time and forever for the benefit of all humanity. After losing the 1912 election, Theodore Roosevelt made an ill-fated trip along the Amazon, almost killed him. Now, pretty soon, going back to Ukraine, you could have American weapons being fired by Ukraine to kill North Korean soldiers inside Russia, guys. And yeah. Lucas, there's a story out. Bloomberg's got a story this morning that uh, North Korea, we know they've sent at least 3,000 troops to help Russia. Bloomberg right. says there's a possibility they could send up to 100,000. That's right, Steve. That's the big concern here. Of course, uh, President Biden met with South Korea's president in Peru. He, uh, the South Korean president's already on the ground here in Rio as well. This has certainly been concerning for South Korea and certainly uh, for the president. It was very clear when we spoke to Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer that the deployment of these North Korean forces, which could be up to 100,000 inside Russia, that was the game changer, and that's what changed the White House and President Biden's calculus, Steve. Uh, Lucas, I think it has a lot to do with who won the election, too. Because he does not, he only has two months mm. uh, to put his agenda forward. So, but thanks so much. The Attackums uh, go 190 miles There's an hour. No question, three, Brian. Yep, uh, 375 pounds of explosives. It'll be big, but it, we need our allies to do the same thing. They're waiting for our go ahead to lift restrictions. <clears throat> but now the UK, Germany, everybody's got to go in there because you put 100,000 men into that fight to a country that has lost about 700,000. The estimates are Russia lost 700,000 off the battlefield, 250,000 dead. It's a stunning number, but they don't care about their people. They put in the poor, the one without influence, and they basically tell them, now you got to go. And according to General Keene, they're out of incentive. They're out of money. Right. They were paying them an extraordinary amount of money. So if your kid died in the fight, you would get some money. Now, all of a sudden, they're, they're drying up there. So how do, you, how do you know how many are killed? Since the you can't really trust. If that's the number they give, you got to figure it's right. probably a lot probably bigger than that. I mean, they're rough but, estimates, but they don't. Russians don't push back on right. it. Well, it, you know, so we're we're at a point where everybody would love a ceasefire or an end to it. But what type of leverage do you have when Trump gets in and talks? Right. If right now they're taking land and right. they're holding on to a little bit of Russian land, but if they could get on the offensive and when Putin comes to the table, when Trump takes over, then Zelensky has a better chance right. of holding on to more of his 
property. Well, I, Donald Trump ran on wrapping it up as quickly as he can, so I don't think he really cares what the Biden administration does, because on day one, he's going to do stuff his way. Uh, his but national Steve, security I think, advisor... But I think that in doing a deal, he wants Zelensky to have as much leverage as possible, because Putin is going to be less apt to do a deal right. if he feels his own momentum and everything else is on his side. And they, said they won't talk until after the inauguration. I, I, right. I've heard contours of what he's talking about with both Putin and Zelensky, and that it sounds like ultimatums to both of them. So it's like, okay, let's wrap this up, which means less fighting. Anyway, uh, Brian talked to Michael Waltz, this current congressman from the great state of Florida. He is the president's pick for NSA, and he had this observation about how Russia is escalating, which is not good for anybody. It's another step up the escalation ladder, and nobody knows where this is going. Uh, North Korea is unleash, unleashing ballistic missiles, artillery, now tens of thousands of soldiers. The administration uh, responds by lifting this restriction. North Korea sends more soldiers. South Korea is now saying it may get engaged. Uh, China is buying oil from Iran for pennies of the dollar. Iran is using that to send missiles and drones in, to Russia that is then hitting Ukrainian critical infrastructure. So this is a development, but it's a tactical one. President Trump is talking grand strategy here. Uh, how do we get both sides to the table to the end this war? What's the framework for a deal? And who's sitting uh, at that table? This is an all-star team, Brian, that uh, President Trump uh, is assembling that will think through these broader strategic issues and how do we drive this war to an end, as President Trump promised on the campaign trail? Right. Uh, there'll be a lot of effect, because I know th th denying Iran will, will stop them from replenishing, to a degree, Russia. That could help. And then you have leverage over China if we stop allowing Iran to sell cheap oil to, to China. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a new sheriff in town. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.